So you've been coding for a little while, but you're still running into a few little pesky bugs in your games and projects. Or maybe you're just looking for a better way to structure and organize your code. Well, check out this simple state machine example that uses Scratch. I'll talk about what a state machine is through a worked example, and then we'll build one together, a really simple one. All this coming your way. Hello world, Surfing Scratcher here, teacher, surfer, programmer, and on this channel, I make how-to coding videos for curious learners and educators. If you find that you're digging this content, then be sure to hit that subscribe button down in the bottom corner to stay in the loop. If you want more information on anything that's mentioned in this video, be sure to check out the show notes down below in the description. So this is a high level simple state machine, a nice gentle introduction. It's not your full blown mathematical abstraction in programming that you'll see out there on the web. And that's for two reasons. One, I'm just not that dude. And secondly, I like to keep things simple so that you can go down that rabbit hole. All right, let's go check it out. All right, let's start talking about state machines. First up, we better define what one is. So a state machine is just a condition that something is in at a specific time. To help us with our understanding this video, let's think about something as some traffic lights. This simple set of traffic lights can have three particular conditions. That stop, the amber light that signals that we're about to stop, and the green light to signal where go. So that's all well and good and all, but how's that relevant to Scratch? Well, we can take out something and we can think of it as a game now. When we load up a Scratch game, we're usually in an idle state and we click the green flag to get it going. Then we've usually hit the state where we're playing the game. Then usually if we succeed or if we fail, that triggers another event in the game. That's when it's game over. Usually to restart your game again, you'll press the green flag and the cycle just continues. So you're probably wondering, all right, how's this relevant? The cool thing about the state machine is that we're not limited to three different states. We can add in our own traffic light system and we can add in as many lights as we want. And when our games get a little bit more complex, this type of approach is really helpful to organize it all. You could use the state machine to control the states of the overall game. So you might want like a pause screen, or you could use the state machine to even control the states of characters. So for when a character is idle and then it goes into this sort of jump state here. All right, that's enough drawing. Let's head over to Scratch and I'll walk you through a game where I've used the state machine and then we'll go build one ourselves. So we're gonna use this Whacker rule game that I built a little while ago. There's a link in the description if you wanna go check that out. And I've got this little variable here on the stage and it is a state variable. And here I've just set some text for different states. Watch what happens as we play through this game. I'm gonna click the green flag and we're in a pre-game state. If you check down here in the code pane, you'll see that I've got state here, which is the one that is on the screen. And I've got all these different variable states that I have created. As we cycle through the tutorial, uh, we can click on this box to go to a new level. And we're now into start game. And then it quickly transitioned to this idle state here. So idle state is this screen where nothing is happening and we've got some feedback here from this chick to do. So we can click the chick to guess a number and see how we've just changed state, ask for number. So we can enter in a number there. And then there's a new state, validate number. And it's just returned back to the idle state there. We can also click assign. And that has changed the state to guess rule. So notice how all these different events and user interactions are affecting the state of the game. So remember, when we're in that idle state, we could click these signs. So now we're in this state. I can't click those signs anymore. Or I can, but nothing actually happens. <coughs> All right, now I've run out of lives and we've just hit the game over state. So that's how we can use the state machine to code different states in the game. Let's now go build a simple state machine. Okay, so I just created a new scratch project and I just used the traffic light emoji and I created three different states, green, yellow, and red. For this project, I'm gonna be working in the code area of the stage. First thing I'm gonna do is create my state variable. I'm just gonna right click on this my variable, rename it to state. So what we're gonna do in this project is create three different states, a stop, idle, and go state. That's to signify the red, yellow, and green lights of the traffic light. I'm gonna create a function that sets the state. I'm gonna create an event that tells the listening sprites that the state has changed, and we're going to create events that set the state to specific conditions. Cool, first thing we wanna do is create our three state variables. So click make a variable, and I like to prefix my states by having a state underscore. We'll have a state underscore stop, we'll have a state underscore idle, and we'll have a state underscore go. We've got our three states over here in the code pane. We can just uncheck all those and let's check on state so we can see what it is. 
Next thing we want to do is when the green flag is clicked, we want to set the text variables of these dates, all right? Because at the moment, they're all equal to nothing. So we need to make them equal to a text value to differentiate them. So let's go ahead and change the state underscore go to just go. We'll duplicate that. And let's now set idle to idle and we'll set stop to stop. I do it this way so I only ever have to check the actual text value and set it once. Now I can just go ahead and check if the state variable is equal to either of these three states. It just eliminates the chance that I'll misspell something. Now we're ready to create a function that sets the state. So jump over to your my blocks. Let's create a block and we'll call it change state two. I'm gonna put a colon there, I'm gonna put a space and we're going to add an input and this will be the state that we'll change to. Press OK, and now we're ready to set some instructions. We're heading back over to the variables category and grabbing out a set state block. We're not setting it to zero, we're going to set it to the state that we wanna to change to. All right, let's test this out. So I'm just gonna drag out the change state to stack block, and for the input, I'm just gonna type the word go. I'm gonna click it, and you'll see up here in the top left-hand corner of the stage, our state is now set to go. But this presents a problem because I've just inputted the text value myself. I could set this to anything, so I could set that to yet, and it's gonna change the state. So the reason we set these states here before and we create these variables is to eliminate the, the chance of this happening. So I can just go ahead and grab that state variable just there. I've gotta make sure that I press the green flag because that's gonna set all these states here. And now I can change the state to go and that works just as you'd expect. If I drag in our idle state, our state is set to idle. I'll do the same thing with stop and boom, just like you'd expect. What I like to do now just to complete this change state to function is heading over to events and just creating an event to tell every listener in the game that our state has changed. So we need to broadcast a message and the message that we want to broadcast is anything that you want but it's pretty useful to be descriptive and I'll just say state changed. Cool, so let's head back over to my blocks. So we can just drag out a change state to. We'll set the game state to stop when the green flag is clicked. Now we're ready to hook up our traffic light to this state system. So I'm gonna jump into the traffic light sprite, head over to the events. And now we wanna drag out a when I receive event. And I've just connected this if control block with this Boolean comparison. We can use this when the state has changed to check if the state is equal to go, duplicate that, if the state is equal to idle, or if the state is equal to stop. The move down is head over to the looks category and just drag out a switch costume stack block. And I've just linked all the states with the costumes that they should show. Just back over here in the code area of the stage, we just created an event that tells listening sprites that the state has changed. The last thing we need to do is create an event that sets the state to specific conditions. Fortunately or unfortunately in Scratch, we don't have access to this change state to function throughout the whole project. So the workaround that we can use are events, of course. We're going to create three new events, and the names of these events are going to reflect the names of the states. So we'll say set state to go. Then we can drag out our custom stack block and set the state to go to reflect what the event actually does. And I've just gone ahead and done that for the other two states, for idle and stop. The reason we do it this way and not just set the state directly on the stack block is so that we can notify every sprite that is listening. If we have tens or hundreds of sprites in here, we want them to know about it. Another useful advantage of doing this is we don't need to use heaps of forever loops because if we use lots of forever loops, that's going to impact the performance of our game or program. Okay, so we've just got a little demo and I've gone ahead and modified our states a little bit inside the traffic light sprite. I've added some sounds to each state. So I've got a zoop sound for both the idle and the stop state. And I've also got a little engine sound here in the go state. If I were making a fully legit game, I'd probably break these out into their own custom blocks, but this will be fine just for now. And I've just got a little sequence of instructions here as a demo. So when the green flag is clicked, we'll wait a second, set the state to stop, then set the state to idle, and then set the state to go as a little countdown. Here we go. Booyah. So this has been a pretty novel example of the state machine in action. In a future video, I'll look at some games on Scratch that I have encoded that you guys have, and I will apply the state pattern to it. Lastly, I'll make this project available down in the description, so go check it out. It's time for a Scratchy question, and I wanna know, do you have a project that's out there that you'd like to see implemented using the state machine? If you do, drop it down in the comment section below, and I'll go check it out. Also, if you think I've missed something, then tell us about it in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear about it.
Hey, thanks for checking out this simple state machine example that uses Scratch. Be sure to smash that like button if you found some value and have a scout of some of my other content on your screen right now. Hey, if you're an educator and you want more, then sign up to the Surfing Scratcher mailing list, link below in the description. That's where I'll send news and resources straight to your inbox. But until then, I'm off to go find a wave. I'll catch you in the next one.